Everyone is shipping in AI, but hardly any tool offers any value. They all work, but if you try to see what could be the advantage in business scenarios, there is none. And that is a clear sign of bubble. But then there are few tools which actually offer value, not only in terms of usability, but also in terms of cost. And I think this MCP CLI is one such tool. It is open source, it is free, it is MIT licensed, and that is what we are going to check out in this video. This is Fahad Mirza and I welcome you to the channel. Please like the video and subscribe and consider becoming a member. Please also follow me on X if you are looking for AI updates without any hype. So coming back to this tool MCP CLI, look, if you are using AI coding agents with MCP servers, you have probably noticed your context window getting eaten alive before even you ask your first question. That's because traditional MCP integration loads every single tool definition upfront. So 60 tools across a few servers can burn through 47,000 tokens just on initialization as shown in this example from their GitHub repo. So if you really, really look at this, this is a real expensive affair. MCP CLI fixes this by flipping the model entirely. Instead of static context loading, it uses dynamic discovery where tools are fetched only when the agent actually needs them. And if you're not familiar with MCP, let me give you a very quick context around it. So model context protocol or MCP is basically a standard interface that lets AI agents talk to external tools and APIs. One protocol, many tools, think of it like a universal adapter for AI integration. Let's go back to MCP CLI. I'm going to now install it and then while it installs, we'll talk more about it. This is my Ubuntu system and I do have a one GPU card, but of course I'm not going to use it for this demo. But if you're looking to rent a GPU or CPU or VM, on very, very affordable prices. You can find the link to master compute in video's description with a discount coupon code of 50% for range of GPUs. For the installation, make sure that you have bun install, which is an all-in-one runtime for Java. So I'm just going to run this. It is going to install the bun. And now we can install the MCP CLI with this bash script. And that is all done. You can, by the way, also install it from Burn directly, but I think this is a better way of doing it. You can also verify the installation by just running this help and you can see that it has already got quite a lot of option and the tool was just released. Okay. And you can also check out the version if you are doing it later on. I think it is dash V. There you go. So this is the version which I am using. Now let me show you what exactly I am going to do here. So what I'm going to do first is going to create a configuration file for MCP. Don't worry if you don't understand it immediately, I'm going to explain it clearly. So you see, I am just creating a dot config directory for MCP that is a standard. And then this is a JSON file MCP server where I am telling the MCP CLI which MCP servers to connect to. So MCP CLI will connect to this MCP server, which I am defining in this file. There are two servers which I'm defining. There is one which is using file system and then the other one is deep wiki. So the file system server that runs via this npx command and it lets us read write files. And then we have this deep wiki remote server accessible over HTTP for searching documents. So I have just created this MCP server. Now, before we move forward, I think it is now is the time to explain this diagram in more detail. So before that, again, a refresher, MCP is basically a standard interface that lets AI agents talk to external tools and APIs. One protocol, many tool. Coming back to this, you see, this is a comparison on the left hand side, what used to happen and now what you could do with MCP CLI on the right hand side. So the agent starts with zero tools loaded, 
just a lightweight system prompt explaining CLI commands. When it needs to read a file, it first runs MCP CLI grep file to find relevant tool, then fetches the specific schema with MCP CLI file system read underscore file, and then finally executes a call with JSON argument. So three shell commands instead of 47,000 tokens sitting in context, huge difference. The architecture is lazy by design. Connections to MCP servers are opened only when needed and closed immediately after. It handles both local STD IO servers and remote HTTP endpoints. Uses a worker pool with concurrency limits to prevent resource exhaustion and includes automatic retry with exponential backup for flaky connections. The config format stays compatible with Cloud Desktop and VS Code so you are not rewriting anything. It's a simple trade, a few extra shell calls in exchange for a dramatically linear context window and lower API cost and that is what I really like because I think cost optimization should be first class citizen anyway. So now you know what exactly I am trying to do here. Let me show you uh, it in action. Okay, so let me show you how exactly it is working. So first up, let's just do MCP CLI. This command is going to list all configured servers. And for us, we have deep wiki and file system and their available tools as you can see here. Okay, next up, let's um, do the same list, but with full tool description including. So I'm just including dash D flag. There you go. So all the tools, everything, but with detailed description, if you want to know more about it. Okay, next up, let's just, um, search and return all tools matching file pattern across servers not everything because let's say we are only interested in the file tools so for that you can simply do like you know typical linux stuff of some pattern matching so i'm just trying to sorry i'm just trying to match it with this file and i'm just grabbing it there you go so only files are there now if you want to see file system server details like what is the transport type command and all 14 tools with their parameters let's do mcp dash cli and file system there you go so all the tools with all the parameters transport how you are going to access this http or anything else you can easily get that now if you are just interested in one function like uh, you just want to see what sort of schema that function returns or function means tool then you can also check out the parameters by this command like mcp cli file system slash read underscore file there you go so the input schema is there which is what is required but is not and then what could be the data type and all that stuff and this is what basically you know models reach to generate a function call Okay, next up, uh, let's actually read a file. So in this directory, if you see, I already have that readme.file and it just says, hello, I am test. I am going to read this file through MCP CLI by calling that function. So simply you can run this command. Let me paste it instead of typing it. There you go. So let's wait there. So we have, we can read the file. So this specific model context protocol server also allows you to list all the elements of the directory. You can also check it out from here. And we only have one file which, you can, which, you, which we can use. And similarly for our uh, another MCP server, the deep wiki one, you can get, get the structure of the documentation of any of the repo there, such as we have done with this. You can also just go with one repo or ask a question about that repo. I mean, uh, if it allows you to do so, so whatever you need, you can simply do it like, you know, in this case, I'm just asking a question and hopefully it is going to return and you can implement all that logic there. So look, if you are really tired of MCP eating your context window alive, give MCP CLI a shot really looks like a good tool. I will drop the link in video's description. Again, please like the video and subscribe and consider becoming a member if you want to help out. Please also follow me on X. Thank you for all the support.